Kia ora, hello, g'day, I'm Philip Duncan from ruralweather.co.nz with your April outlook around New Zealand and parts of Australasia as well, brought to you by resupply.co.nz. Let's take a look at what is uh, shaping up the start of this month, a big storm in the middle of the Tasman Sea. Worth noting that a month ago, we had a storm just up here, Cyclone Alfred. So a whole month later, another big storm. This one, not a tropical cyclone, but has had some tropical connections as it's left Australia, cushioned by a lot of high pressure in the New Zealand and Tasmania areas. But as we go through the next few days, the storm drops southwards and some windy wet weather moves over New Zealand into those drought and very dry regions. For Australia, unfortunately, the bottom part of the country you do have some showers coming through, that's a positive for those who need rain, but a lot of that weather, uh, is the rain is pushing out to sea, and there's another big high still coming through. Some of the high pressure moving further into Australia in the next week ahead, as you'll see in a moment, that will alter the weather pattern in New Zealand and the southeast corner of Australia. So let's try and make some sense of where we're at. Here are the April climate highlights. Sea surface temperatures around Australia in February, the warmest on record for all Februarys, dating back to 1900. Same thing happened back in January as well, so you can see the trend. Uh, sea surface temperatures warmer than average around much of Australia's coastline, up to two degrees above average, that's quite a lot. Western and southern coasts of Aussie, parts of the Tasman Sea, and now around some parts of New Zealand too. Globally, sea surface temperatures remain substantially above normal. Let's get into the other uh, climate drivers, as they used to be called. As far as El Nino is concerned, we're still in neutral. So it's been about a year now that we've been in neutral. No sign of that changing anytime soon. Indian Ocean Dipole, the IOD, that's like the Indian Ocean's version of La Nina and El Nino, also neutral, becomes more relevant over the coming months, but both of those are neutral. And then finally, the Southern Annular Mode, SAM, is basically where it should be as well. So the Southern Ocean is stormy, but that's kind of normal. So we're in a really normal setup, if you like, but that normal setup is producing drier conditions because of the high pressure belt and where it's currently located. So let's talk about that because high pressure is clearly the reason that we've got drought in parts of New Zealand and Australia at the moment, tracking from the Indian Ocean, south of Australia, and then over New Zealand, or even as you see here, south of the country, that's been the pattern so far this year. There's a little bit of a change coming this week. We see some of this high pressure, the next one, uh, ballooning out into parts of Australia. But these southern placements, are one of the reasons why we're not really seeing a huge amount of rain coming into New Zealand, lows like this have been rare coming through, and even this one is expected to drop south. So you'll see there's a bit of an easterly flow at the top here, that's normal, westerly flow to the south, that's also normal. So kind of a normal weather pattern, but if you've had a lack of rain this year, you don't want normal. You want it to be unusually wet for a time. Um, maybe not too much, but enough to really make a difference. So as we go into the second week of April, that's a new, another system coming through. So the first couple of weeks of April, the Tasman Sea is pretty busy. High pressure's not around. Look at the placement of that high as we go into the next week. It's much further north, over the top of Adelaide. If you live in Adelaide, you're not going to be wanting to hear that. But that basically pushes the dry weather up to the tropics, so the tropics is not busy as we go into that uh, period of time. High pressure is all up around us. We do have this low trapped over us, so another burst of rain is coming into New Zealand, but a large part of Australia is going to be drying out, other than the usual thunderstorms here and there. As we go to the third week, so we're in the middle of April now, and you see what I mean? The high pressure belt is not done yet. And so we do see a lot of tropical energy north of New Zealand, some of that energy returning to around Australia. I think the highest chance for another tropical cyclone will be somewhere out here off the Kimberley again as we go through this next month. We'll wait and see. But the easterly winds carry on at the top of the high pressure belt across Australia, but also affecting New Zealand. So that just pushes up uh, the chances of a few showers in the east, but many of those dry drought areas are back to dry and warmer than average again. And so that's not a good setup because you really want more rain. Two big lows are good though, uh, but you'd really want another one to be coming in shortly after that. Look at all the windy westerlies down here. Autumn is uh, certainly waking up in the Southern Ocean, but until these high pressure zones break up more or move further northwards, we're still stuck in a similar pattern that we've been in. Let's have a look at the soil moisture levels anomaly around the country. Here is where we were last month. Here is where we've been in March. Look how much drier uh, the top of the North Island has become. Eastern areas, though, we're seeing some blue 
uh, showing up. We've seen some really heavy rain events in some of these eastern areas, not for everybody, but those that got it, especially around parts of Canterbury, uh, we did see some very heavy rain there for a time. So the North Island's generally drying out more at the top, not so much in the east, bit of rain relief has come into Manawatu as well. The South Island's a lot more varied, but not a great deal of drama has uh, really changed there, other than that wet stuff around Canterbury, but also the dry in the northwest. Very likely to see that changing this week with the very heavy rain on the way for Nelson. Let's have a look at the New Zealand Drought Index map. So here we were in the last update. Here's where we are for this update. Niwa, for some reason, delays the, uh, the maps. But here we go. You can see in the red, those are the areas that are technically in drought. So we're talking about a large part of Auckland, West Auckland, Northwest Auckland, uh, up towards Helensville, and then also uh, all around parts of Dargaville for Northland in that southwest corner. That's the driest part. There has been relief around Taranaki from where we were a month ago to where we are now. Same story around Manawatu, but Bay of Plenty is drier. Uh, we've seen that creep out a lot further, and also some parts of uh, Otago also seeing some of that dry. So that is the drought index. The rain coming in this week is coming into those very dry areas. That's some of the good news. Here's the marine uh, heatwave map, thanks to the Moana project. You can find them online, very cool website, lots of uh, good information there. So look at the eastern side. Fair bit of marine heat wave going on in some of those areas. Uh, strong uh, in these orange boxes, that's a strong marine heat wave. The western side of the country, basically where it should be for this time of the year. Sea surface temperatures, if you want to go for an actual swim, good time of the year to be doing it, certainly at the top of the country where it's pretty mild. You're still up around that 20 degree mark or so. Uh, and the further down the country, obviously, the cooler it gets. So if you're going for a swim around the Otago Peninsula, it's a little cool. It's a little cool, put it that way. <laughs> right, let's have a look at the bigger picture. We don't have these maps for New Zealand. We explained that last time. Neewa in New Zealand, despite being a tax-funded crown agency, don't provide maps for us. They compete against anybody. They competed even against Met Service, so not much hope of uh, getting much help from them. But the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia has this for April, May, June, and it shows percentage of normal. Look how much of Australia. The red shading, people always complain about it. Forget the red colouring, it's just basically telling you it's in that high percentage. It's not done to alarm you, it's just the colour that's used, blue and red. Um, on this map, there is no red really on it. Um, at the very bottom here, kind of a brownie colour, that's what we're seeing in these very, very dry areas. So as far as rainfall is concerned, uh, we are looking at fairly average conditions around Australia, but certainly in the south, it's not what you want to see. It is still staying drier than it should be. So let's get into the rainfall now for New Zealand and Australia. Look at New Zealand to begin with, week one, plenty of wet weather coming off the Tasman Sea. The blue areas, especially in the northwest, wetter than average, white as normal rainfall for early April. So it is drier than usual in the east here, but you've got capacity for that. So this is a good map. This is a balancing act for the New Zealand area. For Australia, uh, I think a lot of you in Queensland are a bit sick of the rain. New South Wales, unfortunately, in the outback and down in here around Victoria, much drier. But notice the coastal areas have a little bit of relief, as does the southwest corner over here. Uh, Tasmania, still leaning drier than average in those eastern areas. So here is the 16-day rainfall. The white boxes show the driest areas. So around New Zealand, the westerly winds that are gonna be blowing the autumn winds that we haven't had for a while, that's gonna dry out these eastern areas a little more. So not a hugely dry area, but sort of Canterbury zone, you're down around that 10 to 15 millimeter mark over the next couple of weeks. Western areas, you can see all the rain, and around Australia, it is a large portion of Western Australia, but perhaps more importantly down here around South Australia and going into Victoria, where that white line is, that is in that box of very little rainfall. Everybody else though, heavier falls. Nothing in there is too alarming, although obviously keep an eye on the heavier falls in the Northern Rivers part of New South Wales after the heavy rain that's just fallen there. Here is the uh, New Zealand close-up view. So you can see the rain that's coming in over the first week. Some of that is here around the Nelson Ranges, uh, King Country down towards Taranaki, where you're seeing 150 to 200 millimeters coming through. Driest areas in the east, parts of Otago, Canterbury, also parts of Hawke's Bay uh, have the lower rainfall totals. If you're in the north here, around Northland and Auckland, it's a broken up rain pattern because these rain bands are, are sort of getting weaker due to the high pressure zone nearby. So you've got some rain coming through. It could be anywhere between 100 millimeters and down to about 50 for those areas. So some rain relief is on the way, but it may not be enough yet 
to really get ourselves out of the dry patch that we are in. And that is all from me for another month. Big thank you to resupply.co.nz. They are supporting us in many ways. Please do check out their website. Lots of great tips there uh, for autumn and all the things you've got to be doing out in the garden and the farm. That is all from me. We'll see you again in one month with our next Climate Watch Update.